Real estate, it's my passion. Exploring different neighborhoods, getting to the heart of why people call certain places home. I'm Jason Sheftel, real estate editor, New York Daily News. We're taking you to some of the most dynamic and diverse communities in the country. It's different and exciting every time out. Each neighborhood, a new journey. This is Best Places to Live. Hoboken has a lot of nicknames, the most famous of which is the Square Mile City. You can walk or bike almost anywhere within 15 or 20 minutes. Another nickname that we like is the Sixth Borough. It's closer to the West Village, Chelsea, Tribeca, than the Upper East Side is. So Hoboken has become a very important part of the New York City living experience, as well as its own New Jersey stronghold. Hi, I'm Bob Foster, director at the Hoboken Historical Museum, and you're here inside the museum with our current exhibit, Driving Under the Hudson. Bob, this is some place. Thank you, thank you. Take me back to the beginning of Hoboken. Hoboken really starts to come into play after the Revolutionary War. So in the 1770s, uh, a family came into town called the Stevens family. They were like a Renaissance family. The Stevens family bought the land uh, that is all now Hoboken for about $3,000. They develop railroads. Hoboken really owes so much to that family. Hoboken is incorporated as a city in 1854. It's the time when they start to lay out the city. They start to build on the lots. The population in the 1850s, though, is only about 2,000 people. Uh, today, we have about 54,000 people. How did the tunnels change all that? And I know the tunnels were played a big role in Hoboken's present and its future. So at a certain point, they realized, like when the heyday of cars is coming in and trucking, they didn't want to depend on ferries to get all that commerce across. And the Holland Tunnel, if not incorrect, came first. Uh, this would be the 85th anniversary of the Holland Tunnel. The shortest point between Manhattan and Jersey is at that section. How important has this place become to the Hoboken community? Um, I think it's become very important. There aren't that many full-time cultural institutions in town. We're open full-time uh, and we do change exhibits regularly. Hoboken has a great art scene. Now you could say the manufacturing has, is geared more towards, you know, individual artists creating their artwork. And of course, filmmaking has always been a big thing here at Sinatra, but you had on the waterfront film here with Brando. That is our big claim to fame with films. <laughs> uh, we did an exhibit a few years ago. It was called On the Waterfront, starring Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, really, the beauty of that film for us is that it's all shot on location in Hoboken. What a gem of a little museum. Such respect and care for all that's happened here and will happen here. There's so much to learn inside these walls. Hello, I'm Alan Kratz from NJ Transit. Hoboken Terminal is one of our premier historic stations. It's, this building is absolutely magnificent. It really is. How old is this structure and how did the color get this one? Architects pray for this color. Well, they do. And uh, this is 100 years of uh, copper aging in place. What was the railroad called? It was the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. Everyone wants to know the million dollar question. What is Lackawanna? We can see it from both sides <laughs> of the river. We drive, both drive by it. What is Lackawanna? Well, it was one of the place names along the route of the original railroad. This is the last station where we still have in the United States trains and ferries operating out of the original structure. Today, with all the combination trains, buses, how important is this as a transportation hub for Hoboken and the state of New Jersey, and what kind of mass can it handle? Hoboken Terminal is very important today because it very much contributes to the life of the city, one of the most active on the New Jersey transit system. They didn't cover the track. The exhaust from the steam engines would go right up. You're in the main waiting room of Hoboken Terminal. This was really meant to be an entry point for railroad passengers back in 1907 when this was built. It was meant to say, you've really arrived somewhere. And I understand you have here one of the largest rooms in the world at the time it was built, which is the waiting area for the ferry passengers? That's right. The ferry concourse, when it was built, was uh, one of the largest spaces in the world, unobstructed by columns. It's 400 feet long, longer than a football field. 70 feet wide, 29 and a half feet high. So it was designed so that when there was congestion on the river, fog, extra traffic, all these rail passengers had a place to wait. 
in a way, this is Hoboken's version of the Seattle Needle, the Empire State Building. That's what this is to Hoboken, isn't it? Uh, it is very iconic to Hoboken. Paris, London, Munich. They ain't got nothing on Lackawanna. This is truly a world-class historic structure. Hey guys, what's the specials today? Hoboken has a tremendous sense of history. Trulio's and other places like it are part of that history. Ribeye? Ribeyes. That's a ribeye, huh? I'm Joe Trulio. This is my brother Steve, and uh, we're the owners of uh, Trulio's Meat Market here in Hoboken. And your dad opened this place up, right? In 1952. What's truly fantastic about Trulio's is, is the place opened up in 1952 by a World War II veteran. Of course, his last name was Trulio. How long have you been doing it for? Oh, I'm doing it since I'm nine years old. People love Trulio's. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we cut fresh meat and we deliver. You deliver. If I'm sitting home today, I want a couple steaks, you can get it to my house. Right. Around the corner from here is the original entrance to the original butcher before they moved it here to Park Avenue. This is like a time capsule. If I was to close my eyes and say, take me back to a butcher shop in 1952, they'd take me right here, wouldn't they? Yes. yes. Whose hats are those? My dad's. Yeah, he passed away in 1992. Did he still hang out back here? Yeah, he did. did. He didn't work in the new store. Salt to the earth, these guys. They should have an endangered list for old world places like this. All their lives, they've been part of this neighborhood. Every great neighborhood deserves a Trulio's. Yet another Hoboken phenomenon, Carlo's Bake Shop. You came all the way from Pittsburgh? I did. Next in line, whether it's Carlo's Confections or a Sunday brunch fit for a king, Washington Street in Hoboken is chock full of some of the best eateries and bars this side of the river. Oh, you're from Jersey? I say, no, no, no. I'm from Hoboken. In 1895, the building was built as the Madison Hotel. Was it really? You got going on inside? Inside, we got a lot of food, a big buffet. Talk about energy and verb. Madison Bar and Grill has it all. Jazz, good grub, flowing taps, and an owner who loves the neighborhood as much as he does his customers. This is a great neighborhood joint. Another thing I want you guys to look at is as I walk out the door of the Madison, the view of the Empire State Building, which the view of the, the, the skyline of New York, I never, ever get sick of. It's really like your own personal postcard night and day. Matter of fact. Yeah, you got to see. There it is. There it is. There, that's the view outside. <laughs> On my phone. I'm Dave Connie, and I own the Madison Bar and Grill right here in Hoboken. Not New Jersey, Hoboken. And if you'd like to place an order for some history with your pint, then look no further than Elysian's Cafe. Hi there, my name's Eugene Flynn. I'm the owner of the Elysian Cafe here in Hoboken. They built it in 1895 as a bar. 1895 as a bar. And it's been running as a bar. Called the Elysian? Called the Elysian Cafe since then. You're really blessed by location. Yeah, Hoboken, in one square mile, we have over 130 different uh, food and beverage establishments. And uh, to be right here on the main street, Washington really helps. So how do you compete? 130, how do you survive? You serve good food. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, you know, when you have an inviting and uh, atmosphere where you make people feel comfortable and give them good hospitality. We do steak frites. Uh, we do all kinds of uh, wonderful sandwiches. We have a warm, inviting bar that people come into. They have a couple pops and then something to eat. Very interesting woods in Cuba at the time, and it's all Cuban mahogany. And it's a one piece. The whole bar is truly beautiful. It really is a wonderful place. Hi, it's Francesco Mazzafaro from Coal Banker in the Hoboken office. So I hear. Hoboken is your town. You really understand how to sell this place. Of course. What's so special about living here? You are so close to New York. It's yeah. one square mile. You are between Lincoln Tano, Holland Tano. Over 50% of people here work in Manhattan. What kind of properties do you have available for us to see today? We have a two bedroom, two bath, and we're going to see a brownstone. So how long will a place like this typically stay on the market for? Less than 30 days. That fast? Yes. Is it the location, the appeal, the it's size? The location, it's the size, and a lot of original details and the great condition of the home. What a perfect house for yeah, you have single door. couples. Yeah, these original pocket doors with the glass. Yep. You have a master bedroom in the front and then second bedroom in the back. Is this house priced at $5.99 to sell? Price absolutely for sale. So this is one beautiful brownstone. It is. Amazing location. So a family will be very happy here. Four bedroom. Four level. 
great living room, dining room on the main floor with an extension on the back. It's, it's in beautiful. good condition. Seriously. Amazing. It doesn't get better than this, does it? No. History views, great people, the food, the brownstone lined streets, and the glass towers in the sky. This Gold Coast would make me proud to live in New Jersey. It's the combination of all of it that makes this one of the best places to live in the world, now and forever. Join us next time on Best Places to Live in New Jersey. This is Jason Sheftel.